Hey everybody, Adam Guthrie here from I Feel Good magazine and I'm super excited today because I have the creator and founder of an awesome vegan restaurant uh, on the Gold Coast in Burley Heads. It's called BKA Vegan Restaurant and Bar and it opened just before Christmas and I ate there recently and I was super impressed because they really know what they're doing. (laughs) <laughs> Whoever's in the kitchen, and I'm sure we'll find out of our guest who's in the kitchen, they really understand food. You know, I'm a chef and it's impressive to go to a vegan place where they understand balance of flavour and how to combine things to make it all work. Um, so I'm super excited to welcome you, welcome Kylie Wood to the I Feel Good. How are you, Kylie? Hi. I'm awesome. How are you, Adam? I'm good. Thanks for um, spending some time with me. Let's have a nice chat. So tell me, Kylie, why did you decide to open this restaurant last year on the Gold Coast? Oh, wow. Okay. So I, um, my partner and I, Ryan, um, Ryan is actually a chef. So, and I'm the vegan in the family, if you like. Um, When we first met, he wasn't eating any vegan food or anything like that. We've been together three and a half years. And... um, one of the big things really was that I struggled. When we went out to eat, I have always struggled to find really, really good quality vegan food. I'm a foodie. I love food. I've always eaten out. I'm a Melbourne girl. So I've grown up with, um, you know, an, an amazing array of food and, and restaurants and everything else to choose from. So living on the Gold Coast for the past 20 years, just over 20 years, um, that's been a big struggle, just food in general. And then when I became vegan, it became a bigger struggle because I found that um, most restaurants out there, not vegan restaurants, but most restaurants out there, it's the token salad or the token a vegan something that they that they sort of throw at you and there's not a lot of thought or anything else put into that. So I was always disappointed with the, with the food. And there's not a lot of vegan restaurants around um, up on the Gold Coast. So there's become, there's become more and more now, but there wasn't a lot. and I personally want to go out and have a restaurant quality meal. Um, that's a big thing for me. I'm not a fast foodie type um, eater. And um, so I think there's a, definitely a place for that um, for, for many people that are transitioning or, um, or whatever or feel that they need to still have that taste and texture of, of meat and things like that. That's not me however. So therefore, that's what I was always looking for. And when I met Ryan, and he was a chef, and I started introducing him to um, the vegan food, um, and he wouldn't have the first time, I suppose, the first time I cooked for him, he actually said, he ate the lot. Um, And he said to me, to start with, he said, if I don't like it, I won't eat it. And I said, yeah, whatever, (laughs) whatever. Um, I like it. So that's how it is. And he ate the whole lot. And that was sort of after at when we had our first dinner date, we'd been out and he sent his food back. And he's actually not that sort of chef. He doesn't do that. But he sent his meal back on our first dinner date. And then he sent the second meal back that they sent out. And he said, I can't eat it. It's rubbish. And it wasn't vegan what he was eating. And what I was having was, and it was pretty ordinary as well. So I, it was a little bit daunting at the time. To, I sort of said to him, well, I'm never going to cook for you, am I? Um, and we had a bit of a laugh about that. So that's sort of the background to it is I started cooking for him and the first couple of meals he wanted to get in the kitchen and he said, I want to see what you're doing. He said, because I don't think you realise that what you're actually putting up is restaurant quality. And I, I said to him, wow, okay. I said, I just, I've always loved cooking. I've always um, fed people. That's been my biggest thing. And I was working in corporate at that time when we first met and I was watching him go to work and he was putting in place some of the vegan practices that he was learning from me. I was learning from him and he was then learning from me and taking them to work and putting them in place, which was really cool. Like I was like, wow, he's so open-minded and um, and obviously, you know, um, if he wasn't, we wouldn't be together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that was really cool. And then I got to a point and I was like, wow, he's, he's becoming quite frustrated because he's working for everybody else and doing these things and he's actually an amazing chef. In you know, My opinion is he is. I have a lot of respect for him and I'm one of those people. I'm not very biased um, about things, I will say, whether or not I think it's not very good or whatever, but I do think he's pretty amazing on what he does. Um, and so I sat down one day and I said, we just need to do this. We had been tossing up opening a restaurant 
Um, but it was one of those things that because of his background, his background wasn't vegan and mine wasn't, I said, I can't really support uh, a restaurant that's not vegan. And he had to then see that there was a need for what I wanted to do, um, that, that he could do that and it would be okay to be 100% vegan. So we then decided to go out and start at the markets. We do Corumban Sanctuary Markets. We've been doing that on a Friday night for the past oh, eight months, I suppose it is, eight or nine months. And immediately, you know, so let's just stick our toe in the water. You can see for yourself whether or not you think it's going to work. And immediately people loved it. They were just like, oh, my God, you know, have, how long have you been here? What are you doing? Where else are you? Do you have a restaurant? It was just the feedback was wow. phenomenal. It was. We had, I think, the first night a, a gentleman came over to us and after he'd eaten and he, inter he interrupted the people that were standing there talking to us and he said, excuse me, I just have to say I've been vegetarian for 10 years. I've never eaten food like this before in my in my 10 years. He said, it's the best food I've ever eaten. So we then just looked for space. But that's what it was all about is was just putting something out there that was restaurant quality. And it wasn't just cafe food or it wasn't any of these other things that are, that are out there and they're all fine. We felt that there was a need for what we're doing um, at yeah. the level we're doing it. Yeah. And that's been, that was my experience too when I came. You know, it was, you know, really high-quality, high-end restaurant food. Um, it's not the cafe Thank style you. thing and there's plenty of cafe style vegan restaurants and plenty of cafes that serve vegan food but there's not many restaurant quality um, places there's not many places serving restaurant quality like really high-end restaurant quality food and you guys are definitely doing that I was super impressed with what you're doing so that's how it all happened so um, yeah. what's your is it your partner or husband or my partner your yes. partner what's his name again Ryan. 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 So Ryan, yes. he's, um, you, you got him to start cooking vegan food. That's amazing yeah. to get a chef yeah. to do that because, you know, if you can get a chef to switch that way that really understands food, you can make some amazing things with plants. And yes. what I really liked is, you know, you tested this market, you know, in a marketplace, like in a, in a market. And yeah. that's really interesting. But that would have given you a lot of confidence to go forward and, open the oh, rest yeah yeah Absolutely. so how did you find the place like where are you located okay so we're located on the gold coast highway in burley yeah. um we're on the beach side near the burley hotel so there's the ambience building um what are we shop one one eight three seven gold coast highway in burley we had looked at space there nearly two years ago probably uh, 20 months ago and at the time there was a gym and everything else there was there was space opening up um, under that building and we weren't confident it was across the other side of the road so we're across the side of the road that isn't the popular side it's not where everybody goes or anything like that it was all nothing was really happening across there and there were only a couple of restaurants and um, one of them was actually a vegan restaurant it started off vegetarian and there was and they they became vegan and that was when we'd sort of we were we were looking and umming and ahhing and we were having the discussion the polite discussion about whether or not um, it was going to be vegan or not. And I said, well, obviously we can't go in there if, if there's already a vegan restaurant there. Um, but we weren't confident at that point in time that that, that side of the road was ready um, for anything, really. It just sort of wasn't moving. It wasn't its time. And I felt that we sort of needed to wait and we would keep looking for the right space. I think Burley is definitely the right space. But we looked around. We looked down at Kiru. We looked at a few places. And then... We were getting quite frustrated by then because we'd been doing so much at the markets and then we were like, everybody wants it and everybody keeps saying, open a restaurant, open a restaurant, open a restaurant. And we're like, find a space. <laughs> um, and then so we went back and we saw that the, we knew that the vegan restaurant had shut down, sadly, that was there and the restaurant next door where we are um, had, had closed as well. Nothing was really happening. They were quite deserted but everything else, everything was still inside. So we had met the people um, that had the restaurant where we are now, the space. We'd met them previously because we try to support local business. We think it's really important. We're burly people, we're local people, and we go out and we support our local business owners. And we, I said to Ron, I said, just ring him. You know, we know them, we've met them, they're beautiful people, but something has happened and it's a beautiful space. Let's just ring them. I think the time is right for this side of the road now. And I think looking at who's going in there and around there 
there's strength there. You need the strength in the business owners around you as well. That's really, really important. Yeah, um, coming from my, yeah, coming from my background, it's a it's a corporate background. So I, I felt from a business viewpoint, it was really, really important to have that strength. So we rang them and uh, the rest is history. Yeah, we yeah. took over the space and, and it, started. And it is a beautiful space. It's got this industrial feel, you know, wood and concrete. And yeah. <laughs> Did you did you fit it out or was it already fitted out like that beforehand? It was already fitted out. There was original people that had, that had actually fitted out before the people we took over from. It's yeah. got a little bit of history. So the guy that originally fitted out, he was a, um, a chippy by trade and he put a lot of work. He sourced the materials. The materials have quite a lot of history even down to the tables. He built them himself from recycled timbers that he got from... Not sure exactly where, but it is from the Gold Coast, I believe. There's sleepers up in the ceiling space that are, you know, suspended down that have still got asphalt bitumen on them and things like that. So that's really cool. Even the lighting, um, and I know I'm going to get this wrong, but it's something like a Polish prison. That's where they came from. Somewhere over in Europe, he bought these lights, all the lights throughout have a lot of history as well. So um, whether it was a prison or a hospital or something, but it was something. Um, So it's a pretty cool space and he did a beautiful job. Uh, We did make some changes. We felt that a little bit of it didn't work as far as the seating and everything like that because it's a funny shaped space. So we did pull some things out, but we really kept the the main ambience of the whole thing going. Yeah. No, it hasn't got a great ambience. It's got a real good feel. It's interesting you said about um, how he handmade the tables and things. You know, whenever something's handmade, it has a different vibe. It's got a different feel to it. And, you know, you can feel that when you walk into your place, it has this vibe that is handcrafted and you just feel really comfortable there. So tell us about the menu. What's on the menu? Wow, what's on the menu? We, um, well, we have, gosh, where do I start? We have, there's a sort of a bit of a mix of things. We haven't gone with anything in particular. Um, we do have a fairly a lot of Asian influence, I suppose, in a lot of areas. My background, my ex-husband's Balinese, so I've got two teenage boys who are half Balinese, and I've spent a lot of time in the last over the last twenty odd years in Bali. So um, in villages, not, not in the tourist areas, actually in the village, getting up at four o'clock in the morning, going to the market with my uh, ex-mother-in-law, and really understanding how they choose their food and um, and the, the the produce, it's all fresh every single day. You have to go at that time to make sure you get the best pick of the bunch, things like that. And then how they prepare it, you know, the different ceremonies and everything else that they go through to prepare food and how men are very involved over there with the food preparation as well. It's not just the women. The men get really involved, particularly with um, with the ceremonies and things like that. So men will arrive to somebody's house, our compound as they call them, and they all arrive with their big knives and everything, you know, these massive knives in their belts with their sarongs on and their traditional, you know, dress, and they will all sit down and chat and be sitting at these big low tables and start chopping things. You know, someone will be on the garlic and someone will be on the shallots and somebody else will be on the chilies and somebody else. They're all doing different things and they're chopping and slicing and even down to bamboo skewers for things, you know, they will actually bring the big things of bamboo that they've gone and chopped down freshly and then they'll slice those with their big knives and make skewers and things like that. So it's really cool, the stuff that I've seen and been exposed to and been taught um, in a different language, there was a sort of a bit of a language barrier there because when I first started going out there, there was no Westerners. Wow, when did um, you first go to Bali? Oh, when I first went out to the village, so out in West Bali. Um, oh. So it was uh, just over 20 years ago now. What have we known? Wow. Yeah, 20 years ago. So um, I used to even have some people stand behind trees and peek out and look at me because they hadn't seen someone with blonde hair and fair skin and things like that speaking this strange language. Um, and I think there was only two people that spoke a little bit of English back then. Um, apart from my, yeah, so it was pretty cool, but it was really good because I would just, we just translate and I learnt some things, some, some of the language, but really I was like, how do you make that? What is in that? And I would write things down. Um, I would just get translation and I would just say to my, my ex-husband, please tell me, I need to know what they've done there and I don't know what that is. I've never seen that in Australia. So, And it got to a point that we would go and travel backwards and, so backwards and forwards each year to visit family um, and my ex-husband used to say to his mother, Kylie makes that better than you, Mum. 
So we used to go, I'd that's go, oh, God, that's, good that's husband, a good huh? thing. <laughs> yes. And I would be like, oh, God, don't say that to your mother. And But she would be so happy that I had actually put in the effort to learn yeah. Balinese cooking to the to the extent that it was that authentic, that he was saying that I could actually make things better than some of the Balinese from his childhood. So that was pretty amazing. And yeah, pretty cool. it is amazing. <laughs> it's interesting you're in Bali. I um, We lived in Bali for three years. Um, yeah. we've, we've been back in Australia now for three years, but we're there for three years. Our kids went to the green school. But the Balinese guy that I used to rent our villa off in Ubud, when we, were, we used to live in Ubud and down in Changu, but when we were in Ubud, um, he and I became really, really good friends. And every time I go to Bali now, I go and stay at his place in the compound and he's, got a, he's, he's created a little um, Airbnb there now that you can go and stay and it's really nice and sweet inside the compound. So, if you, you know, it's a nice thing if people want to experience what a real Balinese um, okay. home is like. They offer yeah. this in Ubud. Um, it's called, what's it called? Um, it's called Manic House. <laughs> oh, Manic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's not that Manic. No. <laughs> but then Manic is, what, what's the... I don't know, it says a different meaning in Balinese. But yeah, for I was going to say that's Balinese. Yeah. yeah. Manic, Manic, every, yeah, yeah. Every time I stay there, every time I stay there, like he knows I'm vegan and he'll make me vegan food. But I said, mate, let's turn it into a cooking class. You teach me. So every night he and I have this cooking class. Oh, and he wow. teaches me all the traditional Balinese vegetable dishes and you know they're all vegan most of them um he doesn't use terassi but which is the shrimp paste and he um and he said adam when i when he was a kid and he's my age he's 49 48 and he said when we were kids it wasn't very often that we ate meat he said mainly it was vegetables and he said because meat was super expensive and um it was all veggies and he said and I said to him, why did it change? Like, you guys eat so much meat now. He said, because it came cheap and everyone just eats it now. But he said, this is really exciting for me to sit down with you and teach you this stuff. So we're making urab and, um, uh, I don't know, lots of different other things. But I love urab. Do you like urab? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, look, I love all Balinese food. I think yeah. Balinese and Indonesian food is just so flavoursome. So, yeah. yeah. Totally. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they all sit there, like you were saying, all the Balinese men come in, they've got the boards and the big knives and they sit in this ballet and they're all just chopping and chopping. You know, the yeah. all herbs and spices and garlics, all the aromatics they're doing. Yes, <laughs> I know. I love it. I love it. Yeah, me I love too. it. Yeah, so your restaurant's got an influence, a bit of Balinese so in, obviously. It does. It certainly does. We do do, and so is the market at times. We take, we have do have some dishes there occasionally. We take to the market. So we have what we call our nasi nasi champur. Um, it's not a tra- yeah, it's not a traditional nasi champur because nasi champur obviously has animal product, yeah. and it's a white oh. rice dish that you have a number of different components that you choose to have with that. Yeah. Um, so we've yeah. done our own take on that because we've obviously gone, I've said, well, I want to do something Balinese because I love the flavours and let's do something. And there's so many people on the Gold Coast do travel to Bali. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's something that they would really appreciate and enjoy. Um, so we've done a nasi goreng instead of a plain rice. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then we've done, I've done a green bean lower. So I've taken instead of a lot of lowers are, again, animal product, they're pork and things like that, so to do with the bubby gooling. Um, so I've just veganised things really and, um, yeah, and when I, and even, you know, down to the sambal. So I make our own sambal, an Indonesian sambal. And mine's more Java, a little bit more Javanese. I suppose that was more the influence that I love, that real tomato um, red yeah. flavours yeah. of that sambal. That's one that I'm probably known for between friends and the Balinese community on the Gold Coast here. And you get um, that they know Western, Western Bali influence because it's on the way yes. up to Java, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So I do, I do make that a lot. That's sort of just a that's a staple for me. I throw that in nearly everything and on everything because I just love the flavors. So mm-hmm. I make that, and I don't use terasi either, which is the shrimp paste. Um, I use a miso. So yes. miso actually gives you yeah, it's a beautiful flavor. It gives you the flavors that you need. That gives us a richness 
um, to put into the dishes that you would normally use a shrimp paste for anyway. So that's been my main substitute for a shrimp paste for anything in in, um, in vegan cooking um, that requires those flavours. So it's really not that difficult to, to change. So, yeah, we do that. I make our own tempeh, so I ferment all our own tempeh here. Yeah. Do you sell it? Do you sell it wholesale? Because no. like, I love tempeh. <laughs> I know. Look, we, we're going to be looking at those things most definitely. We've got a lot of things on the agenda, on the list to want to do. Yeah. Um, but at the at this point, I sometimes struggle to keep up with um, sell it, making enough to be able to sell it because it's a 36 to 48 hour process yeah. um, to get that fermentation happening to, you know, shell and... And you've got the beautiful white moulds on the outside. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's beautiful fun. and it is. And that, that was that was a thing that I really struck. So that has... A, we do a peanut satay sauce, again, a traditional Balinese peanut satay sauce that we can just drink, really. It's just so good. Um, and the tempeh on top. And then I do a uh, tofu, I do a, a firm tofu ketchup, so with a sweet, sticky, ketchup-y yeah. sauce. So like a ketchup manis. Like a ketchup manis, yep. So we do that. As well, so that's that dish. Um, that's a Balinese dish, what we call our nasi champur, and um, and that's one of our most popular dishes. Yeah, um, it's only, yeah, it actually it's our most popular. It's just only recently been overtaken by a burger that I put on. I sort of, <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, I know, I know. I sort of, I I didn't cave. I just thought, you know, I really would like to do a really nice burger, yeah. um, and we ended up doing one that I've played with over the years. It's, it's a recipe that I got from somebody when I first went vegan and I've played with that and tweaked it a little bit and it's a black bean and quinoa burger. So it's actually, even though it's a burger and it's sort of like a little bit fast foody because we have beer battered onion rings and we have sweet potato fries and we make our own aioli and things like that. However, it is a complete meal because of what goes into that burger and it, that's overtaken it. That's outselling everything. It's just that's gone insane. But nasi jump, uh, nasi jumpo is second to that, and everybody loves it and just keeps coming back for more. Yeah, and I think I think do you have a ramen on the menu or? Yes, we do. Yeah, I yes, think that's that, what I had. It was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, well, that that there's a story to that one as yeah. well. Um, that one does have some Balinese influence to it because it's a it's a mushroom satay ramen. So it's actually, that dish comes from, it, it's been influenced in three different ways. We went to the States, uh, not last year, the year before, and uh, we went to, there's a place called Ramen Hood in LA, and they are in the LA markets, the central markets in the, in the CBD there. And it's this amazing place. The central markets, if you've ever been, I'm not sure. It's just this amazing, big, massive shed that is where everybody goes and eats breakfast and lunch. They do have some fresh produce to buy and everything else, but there's all the business people go there and it is just all these different food outlets wow. under this mm -hmm. one roof. And it's it's just amazing. The food there is absolutely amazing. And I'm like, oh, my God, that place is vegan. It's fully vegan. It's a ramen place and it's vegan. It's called Ramen Hood. It's really cool. It's just a long bar and you go up and you order and they've got only three, I think, different types of ramen. And I sat there and they do the, the egg, so the vegan egg in their ramen as well if you want that. And I sat there and it was so silky, smooth and full of flavour. And my kids walked over and they said, oh, my God, Mum, you are so happy. You are always so happy when you find good vegan food. And they were going to go and have something else and they tasted mine and they sat down and both had what I was having. It was that good. So... I turned to Ryan and I said, we have to open a ramen bar. We have to open a ramen bar on the Gold Coast. This is going to be amazing. And, again, we sort of talked about it. We didn't do anything about it. Then last year, my, my youngest son and I, we did a sort of mother-son trip over to um, Singapore, just a bit of a bonding trip for five days during school holidays. And, again, he's really cool to go out with and travel with. I love travelling with him because we get along so well. And... He, yeah, he likes to go and eat and he likes to experience different things. So a realtor, we did everything over that was so good. And we went and every day we walked past this one restaurant that was, it was a Chinese restaurant and they were making their own noodle. It wasn't ramen, but they were making their own noodle in the front window, rice noodle. And I was watching this old Chinese man and it was, it was a very high class restaurant, but he was in this window and he, every day he was making this noodle and he was, the dough would cut, go from one piece of dough to two, three, just the way they stretch it. And it was just, I was mesmerized. I'm like, that's so cool. 
I need to taste his noodles. Like they just, obviously he cooks them to all, makes them to order. So I, and I looked at their dish and they had this dish that just had satay on it with this noodle. And I said, I want that because I love satay. Went in and it was a pork base. And I said, oh, I said, can you do it with a different base? And they looked at me horrified. They said, you can't ask that. Like, that's not going to happen. And I went, ah. Well, I ask anything. I'm not afraid. Me too. So, I know. I'm just like, I'll ask. They can only say no. <laughs> Absolutely. So in the end, I talked to them and they sat down and they said, we do have another one that is a, um, it was a shallot base with the noodle. It was just a broth with the noodle. And I said, okay, I'll have that. And they said it's very popular and it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. I came home and I said to Ryan, okay, this is what we're making. I said, I need a really, really good mushroom base. Can you make me a really good mushroom stock? I said, we're going to have a noodle. It's going to be a ramen though because I love the ramen hood. And I said, and we're going to put satay on it because I love the Balinese influence of that. I think that's really going to work even though it's three different cultures. I want to bring it into one. And, um, and well, it, yeah, it, it works. Works. Fusion's beautiful. Yeah. And I, from memory, I think, you know, you've got hints of shiitake in there as well. Do you have to take yeah, it? Got, yeah, we do. We use about four or five different mushrooms. Yeah, you could taste it. And it was just so, and with that Balinese satay sauce in it, it was like, oh, my God. You know when you got balance of flavour, right, when you pick up the spoon and you eat something and you just can't stop eating it. Yeah. <laughs> and the flavour is, you know, the sweet, the salty, the sour, you know, and the yeah. spice, all perfectly balanced on your tongue. You just go, oh, my God, this is amazing it's what they call yeah. umami you know it's like yeah. umami yeah. that's what it is so um yeah that's awesome so yeah you've got heaps of good stuff like that so tell me how did you and when did you become vegan like living in Bali, okay. a vegan yeah house, you know yeah no i um i became vegan about i think it was about seven years ago um i don't have a date <laughs> it was not something that i consciously did i suppose look my back my background going way back is we had beef cattle look i've been on both sides of the fence wow. so yeah, we had beef cattle um i used to grow all my own vegetables and everything like that i used so i was used to cooking a lot of vegetables anyway and that that type of thing but we predominantly ate a lot of meat mm. and um and i also used to race horses and i used to ride horses competitively so i think at times when people come up with all these excuses these days i can say i've been there done that and I know, where did you go and I know in victoria Okay. In Victoria, so yeah, I'm a Melbourne girl. So it's one of those. I had 35 racehorses in work at one point. So yeah, it's yeah. we yeah. So I know I know that horses love to run, yes, but they don't love to run with a steel bit in their mouth and a person on their back, things like that. So I used to think that was okay. I know that it's not okay now. So that's sort of a little bit of background there. Mm. Um, and I have always loved animals, you know, loved animals, but I ate them. So I got to a point, it wasn't, my turning point was not about that. I had my children and after my second child, I was carrying a little bit of extra weight that I wasn't used to carrying. And I looked at it, I didn't have children when I was really, really young. I was in my mid-30s and I thought, well, I'm not healthy. I can't shift this weight. I'm, I'm getting older, I suppose. Not that in mid-30s is older, but it's not old, but I was getting older. And all of a sudden I realised that I was getting older and it wasn't as easy to shift the weight. And that I, my children were young and I needed to be able to keep up with them and I wanted to be around for a long time and I wanted quality of life so that I could actually see their children, see my grandchildren and be around and be part of that. So I truly believe that we're all going to live, well, most of us are going to live the same probably period of time on this planet. It's the quality of that time that we're here. Um, that is different, vastly different as we age. So I started I started a bit of a journey and that was like 13 years ago of just losing a bit of weight because we're, we're um, conditioned that weight tells you whether you're healthy or not. <laughs> we're conditioned that we need to um, deprive ourselves of things to be healthy. Uh, there's all these things that we're conditioned about. So I started a bit of a journey and I followed all those things that we're all being taught through the media, through advertising, through gyms, through, you know, you name it, everything that's out there. And I followed all of that, of depriving my body of certain things, of pushing myself to certain limits and everything else to remove weight and do all that. And I thought that that was the benchmark. 
And then I discovered a lady in the States that had put out a short three-day program and I thought, oh, I'm just going to do that. It was free and it was um, smoothies and juices and things for three days. So I did that and I was like, Ugh. it was like, I'm not a big smoothie drinker. I don't like the textures of those things. And I was like, oh, you know, trying to force those things down. But I did it and I felt fantastic. So then I followed that on and she did, she released a 66 day program that was within a closed group around the world. There was, I think, um, I think there was only 1,800 of us around the world that did that first course. Yeah. And it changed my life. It was life change. It really was life changing. It was vegan. And she taught a different relationship with food. And she taught how to balance food and what you do need and don't need, not just from a vegan perspective, just from a health perspective, really, at the end of the day, it just happened to be vegan. So I followed that I did a 10 day juice fast was the start of that program. And then it went on to reintroducing foods. And the reason why, so every week was about why you're, intro- why you're eating a certain way and what you're getting out of that from a health perspective and a balanced perspective. So I followed that for 66 days. And as I say, it was life-changing. Through that, I went into it for health reasons, but through that I came out the other end and it really was about the animals and it was an ethical thing. So I will never, ever, ever go back. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I find that... So I've got a program that I've taken people through a whole food, plant-based diet. I teach people how to easily incorporate that into their lifestyle. And it's been, we've been going, doing it for about 18 months now. But what's really, really interesting, you know, we have people that have heart disease and diabetes and high blood pressure and cholesterol, you know, joining the program. And we've also got young people that, you know, don't want to get those diseases and want to try and prevent them coming into the program. But what we find is that, once people start to eat plants, yes. something happens in their consciousness. They're like It's like their vibration rises and they see more of the world or the world in a different light and then they realise they're coming from health but then they're actually now, they're actually seeing that compassion towards all yes. living things. And it's good. Yes. And it's, it's interesting that you, that was your experience because, yes. you know, once you do start eating the plants, you do see... You know, you don't want to create any more pain and suffering and it just happens to you naturally. It's not even a force. It just happens. That's so cool. And you're right. you're, I think you're more, and you're more exposed to that because you, you're meeting you. You meet so many new people. I mean, that's the thing because you broaden your horizons and so many more people are interested in different things. So, therefore, you're more exposed to a lot of stuff as well. People share a lot of things yeah. then as well. Um, but one of the things I found recently, on, I suppose, on that on that topic is that I started the community group as well on the Gold Coast called Veganpreneurs. And at our first meetup at the start of this year in January, we were talking about that, that there's three reasons why people go vegan and remain vegan, and it's either health, environment or animals. And she brought up the fact that there's a fourth reason and it's inner peace. And I loved that. And that's what you're talking about is it's inner peace. It's if you're not eating death and all that transfer of energy, then you are going to be more peaceful within yourself as well and you are going to have more compassion and you're going to be more empathetic about different things. And she brought up something that I wasn't aware of um, is about a prison over in the States, I believe it is, who a number of years ago the warden brought in a whole plant-based diet to the prison and, and threw out all animal product. And there was a lot of pushback from that at the time but <laughs> they continued on with it and they found that the um, the aggression and everything, just the energy levels, aggression, everything else dropped within the prison with the, the male inmates within there. When they were let out and released, there was less reoffending. There was all these things, all these positive things, and it all came about because of the change in their diet. Yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, absolutely. It's so powerful. It does. It yeah. gives you more clarity. It makes you more peaceful, more calmer, more loving, more kind. And yes. that inner peace does definitely happen. And, you know, I follow a, um, a meditation yoga and I have for since I was 21. And, you know, the purpose of eating plants is to help, you know, still the mind and create that inner peace uh, because it helps do that. 
Yeah, yeah. So totally. I like that fourth reason. It's good. Not not many yeah. people are talking about the fourth reason, but there is the fourth. That, reason. That's right. They're not, and it's really, really important. And I think that just as a society, if we could open everybody's minds even further to that fourth reason. I'm very much, you know, on the whole animal side of things. But if we can keep open people's up, minds up to that fourth reason, maybe we would have less violence in the world. You know, I believe there would be. There would be more less violence in the world. We have so much of that happening. We see so much domestic violence on our TVs and in our news and things like that, that maybe if people would just look at a different way, that that would reduce and we would just have less of that and more people would feel safe. Yeah, totally. You know, it's interesting, you know, because it is, you know, what we're talking about, that inner peace, it comes down to back to mental health as well. And yes. the, you know, I was, Osha Gunsberg uh, interviewed me for his podcast and he and I had a good chat. And one of the things he said to me, he just brought out that book and because he suffered from mental health and yes. he wanted to get off these medications and his psychiatrist and doctor said, look, we can do it if you follow these three things. <clears throat> Number one, you have to do a whole food plant-based diet. Yep. Number two, you need to move your body every day until the endorphins kick in. So the serotonin comes up. And number so you're on a high all day. Yep. And number three, you need to meditate. And what was interesting about the Anyway, he followed those things. He followed the three things and he's off the meds now and, yeah. and he's written his book about it. And what was interesting, though, the food part, he was saying that the reason why it happens in the mind and helps calm the mind is because the microbiome in your stomach, the ones that love plants, actually are, when they grow longer, they tell your brain it's okay to be happy. So the more plants we yeah. eat, the happier and the more peaceful we become. And the more wow. of the other ones, like the meat, yeah. dairy and all that stuff, you know, it keeps the microbiome short and um, it makes us depressed and unhappy and aggression and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's so crazy. The Even the thing that's happening. It, yeah, it's, and, and it's true. I was talking to Ryan, my partner, and I said that to him um, after our meet-up on the, on the Monday and he said to me, um, he said, wow. He said, actually, you're right. He said, I feel more peaceful myself. And even the people that, that knew him before I knew him do say he's a different person today. Yeah. How nice is that? Huh? I know. It's yeah, like, it is. It's yeah. so beautiful to eat this way because only good comes from it, huh? Yes. That's the thing. That's the uh, yeah, what People that question it in such an aggressive manner yeah. is that why? I don't understand why when it's such a peaceful thing to do. Why are you questioning that? And that comes out of fear of change and maybe a little bit of shame there along the way because they're telling themselves that what they're doing is okay and they're making excuses for that. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's a hard thing, you know, if we think back before we became, when did you become vegan? How long ago? About seven, about seven years ago. Seven years ago when you did that program, yeah. Um, yeah. It, but if we remember back before that, you know, mine was 10 years ago when I had after the heart attack. Before that, I'd been vegetarian for 20, since I was 21 and I only mm -hmm. ate dairy, no eggs. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember, you know, being a chef, doing my apprenticeship and growing up as a kid, meat was everything and yeah. I can understand when I take myself back there because I remember thinking, how could anyone be a vegetarian, let alone a vegan, you know? And, like, because our culture has brainwashed us that we can only get protein from meat oh, yes. and we can only yeah. get calcium from milk. You know, yeah. But you and I know that that's not true and I have a lot of sympathy for people that, um, you know, can't see that yet because I couldn't see it when I was like that. So I sort of get it and understand it and I have compassion for that. And I know when people start to ask me that question, you probably get it all the time, where do you get your protein? Yeah. But I think that's the greatest question on the planet because that's the first question every person has, including I had when I first started the journey. So whenever someone yeah. says that to me, I go, yes, they're starting the journey. Yes. <laughs> and I give them a good answer, you know. I, I, I can't wait. Whereas a lot of people go, oh, not that question, you know. But no, it's a good question. You know, let's talk yeah. about where do you Yeah, get? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I do. I mean, it, it, I just aware from the things that I eat, you yeah. know, nearly everything that I eat has some form of protein in it. So it's, uh, Everything grows out of the ground has protein. Has protein. So as I say to people, it's not that's, 
I, yeah, I don't do the whole, oh, you know, the whole protein thing. I do look at it and I say I would probably ask the question of when have you seen anybody with a protein deficiency? That's probably more relevant for me when somebody asks me about where do you get your protein from. I say, well, I'm, you know, I'm obviously still alive. I'm not suffering in any way. I feel great. And um, I said, but if you go into hospital and you ask to see the people in hospital who are protein deficient and that's the reason why they're in there, I'm sure that they can't show you anybody. No. There might, maybe there might be someone, but really. I said, but if you go in and you ask who in there is suffering from heart disease, you know, cardiovascular, all these different diseases, modern diseases that are brought on by the way that their lifestyle and the way we're eating and what we're putting in and on our bodies and everything like that, so our wards are full of them. So it's really not about the protein question. It's about what are you doing wrong in relation to protein and how much are you eating and what form of protein are you eating because that's what's actually causing you issues. I had a lady say to me when I first did my, and it is a mindset, and I do feel for people as well, I'm like you, Adam, is that it's just ignorance. We People aren't aware of those things. We've been taught so much. We've been brainwashed, all of those things. We're conditioned to think a certain way. But when I first did that program, in the first 10 days that I was juicing, uh, one of the ladies, I'd worked with her for um, nearly 19 years. But at that point, like we'd been working for 12 years or something like that, mm. and she said to me, it was her birthday and she came up with a piece of birthday cake and it was, you know, the big sponge full of eggs with all the cream and all the things on top of it and everything else. She said, it's my birthday. I want you to have a piece of birthday cake. And I said, I'm not eating that. <laughs> and she said, but, I, but, but you'll offend me. And I said, well, consider yourself offended. I'm sorry, but I'm not eating it. And she said, but Kylie, I'm really worried about you. I said, what are you worried about? And she said, you're not eating. I said, yeah, I am eating. I said, I'm just not using a knife and fork. I'm not eating the, the way that you think I need to be eating. I should traditionally be picking up a knife and fork or a sandwich or something and putting it in my mouth. I said, I'll tell you what I've eaten in three days. And I said, a picture of a shopping trolley, a big shopping trolley, full to overflowing, actually overflowing. I said, of fruit and vegetables. I have consumed that on my own in three days. I said, I bet you you haven't even consumed half or a quarter of that. She said, no. And I said, what concerns me more is this. I said, if I went to McDonald's for breakfast this morning, if I went out and had Subway for lunch and then I grabbed a pizza on the way home for dinner, you would have absolutely no concern for me or my well-being or my health at all. It would not cross your mind at all. I said, but the fact that I am flooding my body with nutrients and it's all plant-based, you have concerns. That's my concern. <laughs> and she yeah, and she went, wow. She said, actually, your skin's clear, and your eyes are bright, you have so much energy. She said, I need to reevaluate that, don't I? She said, maybe I need to follow what you're doing. Yeah. And, that, you know, the proof's in the pudding, isn't it? You know, when people see you change, your skin change, you start to look healthier and you glow more and people can see yeah. that difference when they saw you before to now, it's like yeah. they start to get interested. Yeah, well done. Definitely. Well yeah. done. That, you know? So what, <laughs> on that subject, what do you do um, if you're going to someone's place or invited out or, you know, going to a restaurant that may not be vegan? What are your tips that you could give people? How do you approach those situations so that it's more comfortable for you and also the other person that's hosting or the restaurant? Yep. So particularly restaurant, probably restaurant's the biggest thing for me. Um, all my friends know that I'm vegan and, and plant-based and they generally want me to cook anyway. So <laughs> it's probably yeah. generally not an issue. They ask me. I yeah. used to have staff ask me. I had a, a fairly very large team of staff and they would say, it's so-and-so's birthday coming up would you make one of your cheese boards or would you make a cake or would you make, you know, something and yeah. that's vegan? And they knew it was all vegan. I'd be like, absolutely. And they would all eat it and think it was amazing. But when I go out, I do generally, I'll either, if I can, if it's planned, I will ring ahead and I will ask a restaurant if it's, you know, um, something that somebody else has organised. Again, corporate world, we used to have meetings off-site and things like that. And generally I could ring ahead and say to them, can I have something for me? Um, and I've had some 
experience that have been pretty poor at five star hotels and things like that. That yeah, it, they're, the worst. they're the yeah, worst. Yeah, they are absolutely the worst. And I will complain. I will say something. I say it in the kindest way, but I will say something. Yeah. Um, but I think that's a big thing. Is if you show kindness and if you if you ask for their help, I think that's the main thing for me. Ask for help rather than tell people. So I will ask them. I know, remember going out for a luncheon, an end of financial year luncheon that we had, and we sat down around at the restaurant and it was a fish restaurant. And I'm like, oh. Um, and then one of them looked at me and said, oh, is there anything here that you can eat? And I said, I'm sure we can find something. We'll work something out. Otherwise, I'll just drink. <laughs> and and I said, anyway, we'll find something. And the waiter came over and he said, would you like to order? And I, I just put him aside. I said, oh, look, I wonder if you can help me with something here. Um, and I said, I'm vegan and obviously this is a fish restaurant and I'm just wondering, I can't really see anything on the menu that I, that I choose to consume. So um, it's not that I can't eat it. I just choose not to eat that way. Yeah. So, and that's, that's another nice thing for me. It's, it's nice language. Is a, yeah, language is a big thing with yeah. anything. Any form of communication is the language that you use with people. So yeah. I do. I, I I ask for their help, and I use different language. And I said, so I don't choose to eat that way. So I was wondering whether or not you can help me with that. Yeah. And he said, and people are all trying to suggest things and all trying to be very very helpful. And he said, leave it with me. And he went away. And I said, would you mind asking chef? And he went away and he came back and he said, Chef has offered to make you a wild mushroom risotto. And I said, that sounds amazing because I am a mushroom addict. So that sounds right up my alley. And I looked on their menu and they did not have a mushroom dish and they did not have a risotto dish. Well, and they he had made, rice though. Yep, they had rice. He made me the most amazing yes. wild rice mushroom risotto I have ever eaten. And everyone at the table wanted what you had. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the thing. Yeah. Many functions that I used to go to, exactly that. We'd order a head and they'd sit there and they'd like, why have you got that? That looks really good. And I'm like, ah, because I'm special. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's so true. Um, I, that's my experience too. I always ring ahead because, you know, being a chef and owned restaurants and cafes and also working in it in that industry way back, um, and I, you would know it too, you know, yeah. as a chef, having someone at the table ask for something different, we can do it, but we prefer to have notice because all our prep's done, everything's all exactly. in flow. It's so yeah. the, it's you know the best advice is to actually have someone is to, have someone is to bring a, Yeah, if you can ring ahead, use the right language, and probably thirdly, have some suggestions. So I think that's a big thing also with people that have that have moved to plant based lifestyle is that they're not educated yeah. enough on a plant based lifestyle, so they don't know. So they they do ask lots of questions. They are, see it in a lot of forums online and everything like that. And a lot of people give a lot of advice or give a lot of things, but do one of these do one of these courses, go to a cooking thing. I really believe that's the best way to do it because you learn so much. It gives you such a good grounding and then you can give suggestions to these restaurants. You can give suggestions to the people that you're going to their house to dinner with and show them it's really simple because you've got the answers like that. Yeah, totally. And you can look at a menu, you can see the ingredients that are actually yes. in all the dishes and you say, oh, yeah. oh, I could do that and that and that and put those together and you make that suggestion. That's right. It's not but hard then. it comes with education, you know? Yes, yes definitely. Yeah. Totally. That's super cool. So where are you headed now? What's happening with the business and what's your plans for the future and you've got this little vegan um, entrepreneurial meetup going, which sounds really good and interesting. Um, yeah. Tell us, you know, what's your vision? Where do you want things to head? Okay, so my vision has always been about, I just want to, um, sorry, I'll start again. We are a restaurant and bar, first and foremost. That is what we're about and that's what I want people to see. I want to change people's minds with what we put on their plate. So we just happen to be plant-based and that seems to be working at this point because people are coming in that are meat meat eaters and they're like wow if we could eat this way every day we would go vegan 
So I've always had in my thought, even before starting the restaurant, I've, I am, I've got it sort of parked off to the side is to educate people. So I think that's a, that's, that's a big key. So I do want to educate people. I want to continue to do that. Um, I am writing a program that is about teaching people particularly busy mums and dads, because that's to me where it all starts. We have people that are unwell and they do it for health reasons, but kids are actually becoming more aware of these things as well. And adults are, they really realise that they need to make a difference and they do want to leave a legacy as you age, you start to think about those things. So I want to teach busy mums and dads how to do it really, really easily, simply and tasty because I'm not afraid of flavour. I'm not, there's, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of ingredients that you've never heard of, you can't pronounce, you can't spell, they cost the earth, you're only going to use a teaspoon of it and you're never going to use it again because you don't know what the hell to do with it. Yeah. I'm designing those recipes off to the side because I've been the busy mum that's holding down a job and I've got the kids and I was a single mother for a period of time and they were both heavily involved in sports and it was just, it was on the whole wheel. We were running the wheel, you know, and it was like, oh, my God, Groundhog Day every single day. So I found a way to be able to do that and feed my family and bring them into a plant-based diet and, and get it and it be tasty but easy and simple. And as you say, it's the, it's the ingredients but using them different ways so I can teach them how to do that and you'll buy your stuff, but you'll use it all within the two weeks. You're not going to throw things out. and But you'll also learn the skill to then experiment yourself going on and forward from there. I think so you'd be awesome at that. I think you'd be an <laughs> awesome teacher. You've got that presence about you that can inspire and teach. You have that oh, thank you. naturally. I think you'd be awesome at teaching this. Thank you. So that's a big passion, I think, because I'm passionate about that. So I really want people to get it and understand yeah. it and give them those skills and tools. Yeah. Um, and then from there, within the business itself, you know, I mean, I'd love to, to down the track maybe open some other in other areas um, so that we can share that love around. We will continue to do the market and we will do more markets. Um, we've got a little van, that little coffee van that we... Um, I called her Thelma and I, we've given her a new lease of life. She's got a little black dress now. She was a little red faded, run down thing. She's got a little black, black dress and she looks wow. pretty cool. And she's going to go around to different markets and things like that so that we feed people that way because there's a real community there that, that people want that. Some, people, some families don't want to come to restaurants and bring their kids, even though we have fa family friendly food. Um, they want to go to a market. It's affordable to be able to take the kids out and buy some meals that are ten or twelve dollars each or whatever, and everyone can eat. And it's great and it's tasty and it's nutritious. But they're getting out and, and whatever. So we want to do that and expand that part of it. I also do want to do some take home things. So we do take away, but take home products. So I know there's so much out there that you you can buy prepackaged meals and things like that, but. I just want to expand on that further and be able to introduce and take home things that people can order from us and, and take home. I'd love to get some of that stuff into some of the supermarkets and things like that as well. I really think that we've got some product there that are, that is really, really exceptional food, taste, um, texture, quality, just everything about it, and I really think that we can we can get that out there. And I'd love to. I just would love to be able to share that to a wider community. Yeah viewpoint that they can all taste that and experience it and go wow okay this is what it's all about and it's not that hard yeah and that's really good work you know to the more people that eat that we can feed or teach yeah. to make plant-based vegan meals you know it's I, for me it's one of the most rewarding things that we can do in life is because it just creates another meal just one meal creates less suffering in the world yes. you know not only from an animal point of view but from our body point of view and the environmental point of view and our own well-being <laughs> and yeah. you know in a peace point of view yeah it's um so yeah I'm, I'm super excited that you're going to be doing more markets and sharing this food with people and I look forward to seeing the day when you're in a supermarket. <laughs> so we can do some of the, me the dishes on the menu or have you got some of the ingredients that go into the dishes? That's what you'd think you'd sell. Yeah, it looks some different things. The other day, look, we, do, we make our own cheeses. So we do do artisan cheeses. Wow. Uh, we've got an amazing, yeah, we've got an amazing grazing board that we do in, on, our, on our menu. Um, but we want to expand that. So, again, 
my mind does think along the corporate business side of things. It's just how my mind never stops. I don't think it's like my brain just goes tick, 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 tick. Um, I know when we first started off with the business and before we opened, like we had Burley, all of our, all of our beers, wines, all the alcohol and everything else behind our bar is all vegan. So we went to Burley Brewing and who are, we've got them on tap in our restaurant and they're local. So we went, yep, let's put a local um, brewery on tap. It's vegan talked to them and I took the staff down there to do a bit of a craft beer presentation of understanding craft beer and what it's about and everything like that. Some of our staff don't drink at all. Some of them are big drinkers and some of them are sort of in between and they sat there and immediately I'm there and I don't drink beer. I'm not a beer drinker. And I was having, I was tasting it and I was looking at it from a, purely from a taste viewpoint and understanding what they were talking about. And I could, I could taste the balance in the beers I could taste the differences of the beers, you know, from the light ones to the cloudy ones to the all the things in between. And there was a couple of beers as I was tasting them, I was like, oh, we could make that to go with that beer. Or, oh, I could do a cheese to go with that beer. Like it was just immediate. I could come up with some stuff that was I was really excited about because I'm excited about food, obviously. And, um, and I went back to the restaurant and Ryan had just made a fig jam. And one of the really brewing beers is called Fig Jam. And that we, you might hear us say, so you get what Fig Jam stands for. Some people don't. The younger, younger generation had no idea what it was about. So I said, you're kidding me, because I said, I actually enjoyed the Fig Jam beer that we tasted. We don't have it at the, at the um, restaurant, but I enjoyed it. And I said, I'd really love to make a beer cheese. And I'd like to get that. And that's another thing I want to do is it's on the list is to get those. And we did. We made one. And it's amazing. And I want to, and it's got a fig jam topping and the beer is through the cheese and different things and we've made this. And it's just, an, it's just it is, it's creamy and it's beautiful. And, and I've talked to them and I said, I really would love to put a cheese platter together and bring this cheese because I think it complements your beers and I would like to develop that further. And I'd like to do that again within Australia. We've got a lot of craft beer. We've got a, cra- a lot of craft distilleries with the, um, there's the gins and the bourbons and the, all the different things that are out there if we can create food and cheeses and things like that that we can then promote within their businesses as well, um, I think that is another way of getting that message out to people. Ditch the dairy. It's really cool. It's really yummy. It doesn't take plastic in with the stuff that they're selling in the supermarkets, all those things. So my mind's always ticking over. It sounds like (laughs) the next step, the next step. (laughs) of how to do that so that's one thing we will certainly be selling cheeses but you know and again we we use there's a um what do we do i make a ricotta that we use um in our mushrooms we stuff it's a basil ricotta that we use stuff our mushrooms with and from there that just the plain ricotta that we made is just yummy on its own bought that home i've mixed it with spinach i've done all that i've rolled it in pastry made these sausage roll things the other day and they just went, woo, gone, 24 of them, gone like that within our household within 12 hours, I think it was. And they all just, it was, and I was just like, it's just so light and it doesn't taste pasty and it's not heavy like a lot of stuff out there. And it's not fake because I don't like, as I said before, I don't personally like the fake fake meats and things like that. So, and again, health-wise, they're not the best way to eat the, the yeah. fake stuff, but there's a place for it but we won't go down that path. But that's one of the things, our burgers, we stuff them with our house-made mozzarella and they're the black bean quinoa. I think they'd be certainly a winner that we could sell commercially commercially, um, because I think it's a it's a whole whole meal on its own. It's very nutritionally balanced. Yeah, absolutely. I've got some, I do little patties that we sell at the market that they're a, a lentil and artichoke patty that everybody loves in our hummus plate that we make. So they would be really good. Like we just, we, I do have a lot of stuff that we could. I've got so many recipes. I've got pages and pages of things. So, <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to watch that develop over the coming years. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything that a message that you would like to share with anyone about being plant based, eating plant based? What's your why that you could share with others that may inspire them? Um, my why is leaving a legacy behind, I think, for me. Just really give it some thought. I think over time, if you're of my age, I'm 51, and when I was young, I never considered anything except for myself. And I know young people are like that. 
Um, but if you can think about, I talked to a lady recently, I listened to a talk fairly recently last year, and a lady spoke about doing a course and she talked about a thousand year legacy. And that blew my mind yeah. at the time for about 20 seconds. And then I went, oh, I get that. I get it. Oh, my God, that speaks. I really get that. I want that. So think about it. Stop saying, but we've always lived this way or we've always done that or it never killed me or it never hurt or harmed my parents or my grandparents or whatever. Stop making excuses and just think about what the future holds and if you can be part of that because it is a legacy. If you think about, sometimes we use the words that, you know, if you've lost a, a parent that your father or your mother would be proud of you or whatever. So we do actually think of those things. We do value those things as humans. Yeah. Um, so if you can start to think along those lines of what your legacy is to this planet, to the animals that we are causing such pain and suffering to, um, and for your children, for their inner peace in the future because we live in such a violent world. If you can think of your legacy, and I think a whole food and plant-based vegan lifestyle is definitely um, a massive part of that. Definitely. So how do you see, what's that vision, that legacy that you see that, you're, that you've left? I think I, I feel that my like, legacy. What's that world look like? That world looks like the people are eating plant-based, that they have got past their mind is open and they start, they're looking with different eyes. They're not just listening in their heads and listening to those thoughts immediately of, oh, it's vegan, there's no meat. They picture a plate with a piece of steak and three veg and they take the steak away and they don't want to eat what's left. That those things stop. They start eating and thinking with their, sense, with their senses more than anything, rather than just listening to the voices in their head that they sense things and they will follow that through. And my legacy is that I've taught them that, that I've, that I've left that behind, that they've been able to eat that way. They've walked away feeling fantastic and really appreciating what they've eaten, what they've learnt, the skills they've learnt and the things that they can pass on to their future generations. Yeah, definitely. And what's the benefit to them if they were to do that? Benefit is health, um, definitely health. Um, being able to live with the fact that you can call yourself an animal lover in the true sense of the word. You're not a domestic pet lover, that you are a true animal lover if you follow this path. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. That's so lovely. <laughs> Wiley, it's been so nice chatting with you. It's been mm. excellent. And um, thanks for sharing your story. Thanks for creating such a beautiful place for us to eat at BKA. Actually, what does BKA stand for? Yeah, so BKA, I was going to say that is BKA stands for Be Kind Always. Oh, and that is what where, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, and that is what it's about. We have it written on the wall and, it, and it, that is such a, I've had that written down for a long time because I do believe that if you can wake up in the morning, as humans we do listen to that head in our, that voice in our head and we say some awful things to ourselves. And I feel that if you can start being kind to yourself always, when you wake up in the morning, if you tell yourself kind thoughts, you then that radiates out from there and it starts you off for the day and you start then obviously attracting that back to you. So if you can be kind to, be kind always to yourself, to those around you and every single person that we share this planet with um, is would be a pretty amazing thing at the end of the day. So that's what that's about. That's a lovely, <laughs> lovely name for a restaurant. <laughs> Thank Once you. again, <laughs> thank you, Kylie. Thanks for creating some beautiful food for us. Thanks for sharing your story. Really appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you for having me. My pleasure. Have a great day.